Should we do Bronson? Please. Yes. No more of that irritating voice. No, okay, I won't do it anymore. Just okay. in a world forward. of prisoners. Here. No. No. Okay. Um, Normal Bronson. voice is fine. Okay, Bronson, which is, uh, in inverted commas, based on a true story. I want to be very careful about this. Based on a true story of um, uh, prisoner Michael Gordon Peterson, who uh, has been referred to in the British press as the most violent prisoner in Britain. Uh, he changed his name whilst he was inside. I think he came out and started boxing to, uh, to Charles Bronson and now prefers to be known as Charles Bronson, named, obviously, after Charles Bronson, he of Death Wish, whose real name, I think... Wasn't he Charles Bukinski? Because I think at the beginning of House of Wax, he's credited as Bukinski, so it would be spelled Bukinski, but I think that's right. So mm. changing it to the name that somebody else changed their name to. Mm. Now, there's been a bit of fuss about the film because basically this guy's incredibly violent, and this is a sort of biopic portrait of him. Um, it's about his life, most of which takes place in prison, and most of his time in prison takes place in solitary confinement because the minute you put him with other people, he kidnaps them and then is incredibly violent. Here is a clip of Tom Hardy as Bronson early on in the film and we've had to alter this slightly because one of the things that the BBFC say about the film being rated 18 is that it is rated 18 for several uses of very strong language and when they said several they meant several right. how else can I explain it there was nothing wonky about my upbringing my parents were decent respectable and upstanding members of society I went to school I kept my head down. Sure, like most kids, I got into trouble. I liked it. Oh, Michael! This is Peterson. I really must talk to you about Michael. He's been absolutely. But it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, bad. But as far as the rest of the movie turns out, he was bad, 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 bad. Now, a couple of interesting things. Um, reported on the BBC uh, News uh, service on the 10th of March. Where are we now? We the 12th a couple of days ago. Prison officers want an inquiry after a recording of Charles Bronson's voice was played at the premiere of a movie about the long-serving inmate's life. The armed robber and hostage taker 56 made the recording at High Security Wakefield Prison in West Yorkshire. And he said, uh, see you at the Oscars. The Prison Officers Association said the recording undermined prison security and the government had taken steps to, re to prevent a repeat. They've also said that they've condemned the movie starring Tom Hardy in the title role for glorifying violence. Now, the director, spelt Nick Wingding Reffin, but I believe uh, pronounced Nick Whedon Reffin, who I think is the son of Anders Reffin, the uh, editor. You, of course, will know him from directing Fear X and Pusher. I was just going to wonder, if it's is him, it the is same it? guy? It's, it's, him, it's yeah. really the same guy. Says, That's um, extraordinary. Uh, I'm not being British. I wanted to make the film about the concept of Charles Bronson, in inverted commas, rather than Michael Peterson, his real name. I personally can't judge him, as I didn't have any preconceptions or knowledge about his tabloid exploits even to, to, or to even comment on that. The, mo the more the movie became about the concept of somebody becoming another person, an alter ego becoming Charles Bronson, which I thought was very intriguing. So we have two different things going on. On the one hand, you have a fuss bring in the press about the real uh, character whose real name, Michael Gordon Peterson, changed to Charles Bronson and things that have happened in relation to uh, recordings of his voice being played at the premiere. On the other hand, you have the movie, which the director tells us is about the constructed character, the artificial Charles Bronson. I think we have to separate these two things to begin with. Many comparisons have been made to Clockwork Orange. As you, I think you could hear even from that clip, the kind of the use of uh, that sort of classical music with the uh, extreme youthful violence. And um, I think if you could see a clip of it, you'd see the way in which some of the camera moves are done, which are very stately and are very Kubrickian. Um, a, a closer comparison would probably be made with Chopper, the film which was about the, um, you know, the Antipodean uh, inmate who, he, who he actually was very much like this, except that he was much more loquacious. I mean, Chopper himself was somebody who you know, talked and wrote about himself and kind of turned himself into a popular hero, despite the fact he was an incredibly violent man. He once described himself as just an ordinary bloke who liked a bit of torture. And he didn't say whether he liked a bit of torture porn, but he liked a bit of torture. So there are comparisons between Chopper and Bronson, the difference being that Bronson is largely inarticulate, and the film is much more visual rather than a story told through words. Uh, what you get is a portrait that is very deliberately artificial. It, is, uh, a, it has theatricality and artifice. It has sections in which Tom Hardy who is brilliant. I mean, Tom Hardy's performance in the film is really, really good. The film won an award at the Sundance Film Festival, and Tom Hardy, it is an absolutely mesmerising performance. I think the last time I saw him was in a Guy Ritchie movie, and this is a, you know, 
total leap on from that. So great central performance. Visually very interesting because Nick Reed and Refn does have a very, very good visual sense. His colour scheme is very bold, lots of reds, lots of sort of dark browns, very, very you know, bold to look at, very visually exciting. And and oddly, for a good section of the movie, walks exactly that kind of clockwork orangey line between horror and humour. So it's done in a very theatrical way, and it's done in a way which is very engrossing and very entertaining, occasionally laugh out loud, funny, quite often quite nasty, and um, very physical. It's all to do with his physicality, it's all to do with him as a, you know, as a deranged character, but crucially, crucially, an artificial construct. And I think that in judging the film, people have, have struggled between saying, they don't want to say... I'm approving of the character who calls himself Bronson, but that wasn't his real name. But they want to appreciate the fact that they like the film, but they're kind of caught on the horns of a dilemma. So I just want to separate those two things off and say the film, which is not a film about a real life character, although it is inspired by a real life character, but it's inspired by a real life character who invented a fictional alter ego for themselves, which was entirely violent and aggressive. I think the film itself is impressive and I enjoyed watching it. I understand that that is separate to the real... Now, here's the funny, the strange payoff. At the end of the film, there's a thing which says he know, the, the real character uh, is still is not up for parole and he doesn't have any kind of parole date. And I thought at the end of the film, well, I'm really glad about that because I've just spent 90 minutes in his company and he's a psychopath. Um, at the end of the BBC news story, I think that's the way it comes across in the film, fictional character about a fictional character based on a real character. At the end of the BBC news story, it says that there is now a move from the real character's family to uh, get him uh, rehabilitated and paroled and they are all saying um, that actually what they want is uh, his mother said he's very different now. He's not a danger to anybody. He's mellowed right down. Mm. OK, well, again, I don't know anything about the real character. Believe me, if he's anything like the character on the screen, he would have had to mellow right down an awfully long way, like a really, like probably down to Australia where he could probably meet Chopper and they could swap stories. That's how far down he would have to mellow. But separating the film from that person, the film itself was visually interesting and exciting and Tom Hardy's performance is really... 